Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. This video is about the fixed point of the Legendre Fenchel transform of function f. Function f is from Rn to the extended set of real numbers. The Legendre Fenchel transform or the Fenchel conjugate of the function g of y is the supremum over x in Rn of y transpose x minus f of x. Let's start by obtaining the Fenchel conjugate of the function f of x that is equal to k times the l to norm squared of x. And k here is a positive real number. What is the Fenchel conjugate of this function here? The L to norm squared is a function that appears in lots of applications. So it is interesting to know what its Fenchel conjugate is. Just insert k times the L to norm squared here. So g of y is the supremum x in Rn, y transpose x minus k, and then the L to norm squared of x. y transpose x is a real number. It's the inner product of vectors x and y. This is our bounded by the absolute value. And then we can apply the Cauchy-Schwarz inequality. This absolute value of the inner product is upper bounded. This is Cauchy-Schwarz. The upper bound is the product of the L to norm of y and the L to norm of x. This is a quadratic function in the L to norm of x. So called the L to norm of x alpha, we have a function h of alpha, which is this non-negative scalar, the L to norm of y times alpha minus k times alpha squared. Its first derivative is the L to norm of y minus 2k alpha. And this first derivative is 0 when alpha is equal to the L to norm of y divided by 2k. And at this point, this function is maximized. It is a concave function. The maximum of h of alpha is, we insert this here, so we get the L to norm squared of y divided by 2k minus uh, k, and then the L to norm squared of y divided by 4k squared. The maximum of this quadratic function here is the L to norm squared of y divided by 4k. This is an upper bound on the supremum. Is this upper bound achievable? To achieve it, we need x and y to be linearly dependent. Specifically, we need x to be 1 over 2ky. If we put x equal to this value here, we will get our upper bound. This is g of y. What do we have? We started with f of x, which is equal to k times the L to norm squared of x. The Legendre Fenchel transform or the Fenchel conjugate is g of y, and this is equal to the L to norm squared of y over 4k. Observe that f is proportional to the L to norm squared, and so does g. In fact, if we choose k equals to 1 half, then f of x is equal to 1 half the L to norm squared of x. If we put k equals to 1 half here in the denominator, then g of y is also equal to 1 half the L to norm squared of y. We have this functional form, 1 half times the L to norm squared. If we apply the Legendre Fenchel transform, we get the exact same function. Thus, the function 1 half times the L to norm squared is a fixed point of the Legendre Fenchel transform. Now, the interesting question is, are there other functions with this property that if you take the Legendre Fenchel transform, you get the same function back? If f of x is equal to g of x for every x in Rn, then what is f of x? We have an example here, which is this function, 1 half times the L to norm squared. Are there other functions? And if there are, then what do they look like? To answer this question, we need to go back to the definition of the Fenchel conjugate and study some of its properties. Recall that g of y is the supremum x in Rn of y transpose x minus f of x. Then g of y is greater than or equal to y transpose x minus f of x. And this is true for every x and y in Rn. If we fix a y and then compute this quantity, then g of y by definition is the supremum. So g of y is greater than or equal to y transpose x minus f of x. If we move f of x to the other side, we have that y transpose x is less than or equal to f of x plus g of y. This inequality is called the fenchel young inequality. Now, if f is equal to g and we set y equal to x, then this inequality becomes x transpose x. So this is the L to norm squared of x less than or equal to 2 f of x. If there is a function that is equal to its fenchel conjugate, then we must have this property. We must have that f of x is greater than or equal to 1 half and then the L to norm squared of x. Consider two functions f1 and f2 such that f1 of x is greater than or equal to f2 of x for every x in Rn. If this inequality is true, multiply both sides by minus 1, so minus f1 of x is less than or equal to minus f2 of x, then add y transpose x to both sides. Now, if we take the supremum of both sides over x, we will get that the supremum of y transpose x minus f1 of x is less than or equal to the supremum over x in Rn of y transpose x minus f2 of x. And this is g1 of y, the conjugate of f1 of x, and this is g2 of y, which is the conjugate of f2.
and the relationship is that g1 of y is less than or equal to g2 of y. The rule is that if we start with f1 greater than or equal to f2, then g1 is less than or equal to g2. We obtained that f of x is greater than or equal to one half the L2 norm squared of x. So this is a function of x, and this is greater than or equal to one half of the L2 norm squared of x for every x in Rn. Now, according to this rule, if we take the differential conjugate of both sides, then what we have is that g of y is less than or equal to, and we know the differential conjugate of this one half times the L2 norm squared. It is exactly one half the L2 norm squared of y. G is equal to f, so this means that f of x is less than or equal to one half the L2 norm squared of x. We have two inequalities. f of x is greater than or equal to one half the L2 norm squared of x, and f of x is less than or equal to one half the L2 norm squared of x. The conclusion is that f of x must be equal to one half the L2 norm squared of x. This means that the only fixed point of the Lagrange differential transform or differential conjugate is this function, one half times the L2 norm squared. 